Welcome. This is 30 Minutes of Truth for Life with Pastor Poole, pastor of the Bethesda Baptist Church located in Muskegon, Michigan. Join Bethesda each week on this station as we meet the challenge of change through Truth for Life. And now, Pastor Poole. having knowledge and being satisfied with knowledge alone is that we don't realize that what is needed to go with the knowledge is the power of the Holy Spirit. You can have all of the knowledge you want about putting together a computer But if you don't attack the problem and try to do it and allow the spirit of your ambition to carry you through to gather and put together that knowledge you have, seek other knowledge and then apply it, it doesn't mean anything at all. There has to be application. There has to be doing it to have the transformation. When I go and attack something that I don't know about, I seek knowledge for it. But when I get the knowledge, I try to use the knowledge to do what the knowledge calls me to do, and thus have the experience of seeing things put together as they ought to be. I hope you're following me. So we can't talk about what 
Galatians says to us about the fruits of the Spirit, except we have the Spirit of the Lord and use those fruits that he gives us, that knowledge of what can grow, to go out and do what it calls us to do and then gather for ourselves the testimony that comes because we have sought to do what we were told by the knowledge to do. We will always be in trouble if we don't try to do what the Word of God says in our lives. When, when you read this, this letter that Paul wrote, you will find out that this fruit that I'm talking about, the fruit of the Spirit is love. I was talking to the deacon board the other day, and we, we talked about some things that represent us clearly as people who have knowledge, but we are people of knowledge who do not practice what that knowledge is that is given to us. We, we say we know about love, but what love do we know about? Do we have a physical love that has to do with things physical, natural, sex, how you look, what attracts me because of your beauty? You know, some people consider that they love because of the hat you wear. The way you walk, the way you talk, but is that really love that I'm expressing? Some people enjoy being with other people because they bring joy by the way they laugh. By the way, they do quirky things. Some people think they have peace with other people because they never, they never criticize each other. So we're, we're a peaceful group because we don't criticize each other. But is is, is that true peace? Do we have forbearance? Are we able to stand up when we're in trouble? Or when we don't like things that are going on with another individual? Can we bear that relationship? Are we kind? And then in the midst of the fray, are we faithful? I wonder. Because all of these acts and behavior, love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, for the right reason, all of these fruits of the Spirit are a part of the transforming acts that take place in the Christian who has knowledge of God. If you have 
knowledge of God, it doesn't mean that you simply use it to tell somebody, I know all about everything. It means that you act like gods. Love, have joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. For being a Christian or loving as God loves, that's not simply an emotion, an emotion that happens every now and then. It's not what it is. Coming and making a big display that I'm a, I'm a Christian through my amen and my loud voice and something that I like. That's, that's not what it's really all about. It's not an emotion. It's a way of life. It's a way of living. It's a way of being toward each other and about remembering the foundations that God has given to us for living. That's, that's, that's what it's all about. And so, so today I'm talking about how the apostle is calling us to give joyful thanks. for a rescue from the position that I've tried to make known to you that captures most of us at some times in our lives and sometimes takes such a hold of us that it continues day after day, week after week, month after month. Well, Paul was busy in his uh, epistle exposing the, the heresy that was in the church that was similar to the kind of things I've been trying to tell you about Gnosticism. Gnosticism was a, a value of knowledge. And while those who believed in having knowledge were always talking about how important it was, they never used the knowledge they had to develop into what it called them to be. They only held to it because of the ritual and performance that it was. And you know what I'm talking about in the church, how we have ritual and how we do certain things. But how often do we ask ourselves, what change does this ritual bring about in my life? We come and pray an invocation. But how often do we really hear the words of the invocation and find that we develop new passion for the word of God that transposes, changes, brings into my life a new strength because I not only heard the truth but did the truth as I sought to live day by day. When you really read the text and go into a research of its history, you will find that the Apostle Paul 
wrote this with in mind the Exodus. How the Lord had brought his people Israel out of the trouble they were in. He doesn't call the Red Sea, speak out about the Red Sea, but he talks about how the Lord has delivered us from death and the payment for our sin. And if you take and search and understand the story of Israel, you will see how God took Israel and brought her through the Red Sea when things were bad, allowed her to live on the other side, to be in the wilderness. But understanding her problems, he brought her through the wilderness, through the things that were yet wrong, and caused her to recognize that it was he who had caused change for them physically and spiritually. For when he brought them through the Red Sea and carried them through the wilderness, they were not the same people that they were before. What has God brought you through? Have you not had your Red Sea? Have you not had your wilderness? Have you not experience all of the distortions in life that are propped there that look kind of good sometimes but take us into a valley of shame? Have you not had those experiences where you had knowledge but you did not have the power to carry through where that knowledge is concerned? Well, Paul is saying to those who are boasting about how they know the Lord, and how his laws are being carried out in their lives. He is saying to those folk, if all of that has happened, then it ought to be seen in your living. We have testimonies sometimes from folk who says, he brought me through. But he brought you through for what? He brought you through so that his name might have glory. Yeah. And so the question that I append to that is, are you giving him glory? Yeah. If you say he brought you through, somebody ought to know it other than you're saying it. If you say he brought you through, Somebody ought to be able to look at a na an action that has taken place in your life that would demonstrate that you thank the Lord. Yes, sir. Yes. For bringing you through. What has he done for us that we can follow the pattern? Well, number one. He has enabled us to share the inheritance of Jesus Christ. We have the opportunity that we have because Jesus died for us. Read your Bible. Did anybody else die for us? Did anyone else save us from our sins? Has anyone else been able to take away the penalty for our evil living? Has anyone else been able to guarantee us that when death would come, it would still have no victory for us because the angel is going to sound its trumpet one day and we're all going to get up and be a part of a general resurrection? Has anyone been able to top that? Paul writes about how God has rescued us from Satan's kingdom 
of darkness. And the darkness of the kingdom of Satan is that Satan never wants you to truly believe in the light of the gospel. Satan never wants you to truly believe in the light of the gospel, which says that we are freed. We are set free from those things that cause fear in our lives. The Colossians feared the unseen forces of darkness. The other Sunday, I, well, before the elections, I was saying, trust God, trust God, trust God, trust God. The reason, we don't know what's going to happen, but God knows, God has a plan. And if God has a plan, God is not going to fail us. Trust God. Trust God. Because what is happening now is really planting a seed to bring us to the place where God wants us to be. Planting a seed for the change in our behavior. The change being getting our attention, making us recognize that we're not the end thing, causing us to realize that somebody else has control of our lives, that someone else is sovereign, sovereign meaning that he has the last word, the authority over everything. So we ought to be thankful today because he has power over sin and because he has power over sin. If we believe that, then we don't have to worry about the penalties thereof nor the judgment that would come otherwise. For he has forgiven our sins. Read Ephesians 1 and 7. He's forgiven us of all of those things and we can take this knowledge that we have that he has forgiven us and live in the joy of his presence with us. And when I say live in the joy of his presence with us, I mean while the transformation is taking place and sometimes we're up and sometimes we're down, we can be happy because the final thing is that he is our God and we are his children. And in the end, he will give us the victory. So today, as we recognize this is a week of thanksgiving, I say to you, rejoice and give thanks for your rescue. Give thanks for your rescue by allowing his word to have action in your living every day. to have action in your living every day. And when that action comes, note if you will, you're not going to be comfortable every day. You're not going to have everything you want every day. You can dream all you want to, and some of those dreams are not going to come true. But there's one thing that you can be sure of. 
that God will bring you through whatever it is. you will be able to shout and give glory to his name. So today and the days ahead, rejoice. Give thanks. Pray for others that they may have the knowledge and, and, and seek the experiences that come with the knowledges. Giving thanks for your rescue before the time. And I'm going to close with that. Before the time. We haven't met the judgment yet. But we already know what's going to happen at judgment if we know the Lord. We haven't come to that point when the final trumpet is sounded yet. But we already know that when, when that trumpet sounds, we'll rise up. Yeah. And we will be here. And nobody will be able to take the victory of our living away from us. Paul was in prison when he wrote. And somebody said, the jailers got happy in prison because of the message that he was sending to the church. Even those who have not accepted the Lord with the notion of what's going to take place can be happy, can be lifted up, can be joyous. Because you are assured of one who will bring you through the Red Sea, the wilderness, and all of the detriment that is in the world. And declare that you are healed. And his proof is, I died for you. I went in the grave for you. I got up for you. That all of us together could realize what it is. Holy, holy, holy. God reigns. Yes. Not for a moment. God reigns forever. Yes. And ever. And ever. Rejoice and give thanks for your rescue. For if you believe him and act on your belief, you are indeed saved. And the joy of your salvation will be recognized in your change.